Hello, this is T.D. Brewer, your mentor to living the blessed life. I want to welcome you to day 14. I pray that all is well and that you're excited as your life is continuing to improve and evolve and become all that which you are dreaming and imagining and desiring it to be. Hallelujah. How many of you know that no matter how life has been, your future is what you see it becoming. And because you're expanding your capacity to embrace a much greater, a much more fulfilling and rewarding life, you will have a life that will go down in the history books or of he did it, she did it. They, they came from this family, they came from this background. And it's an, a wow factor experience as you look back over your life and you say, with God, all things are possible. Yes, they are. You know, I come from a background where I look back and I, I marvel, I really do, at how good God has been. When I learn certain principles and certain keys and, and I begin to work those things, I begin to gain understanding of those things and my life changed. I remember I went to apply for a job and the, one of the ladies that was there was really rude to me. She's like, we're not hiring. And, and I was like, can I fill in an application? And the other lady said, sure. And the lady was like, I don't know why you're filling out the application. I told you we're not hiring. See, life and death is in the power of what? Our tongue, your tongue, my tongue. I was not moved by the uh, secretary who told me that they weren't hiring because I had already envisioned myself working there. I knew the role that I wanted and I was not going to be moved by what she had to say. So I filled out this application. I turned it in. I thanked them for their time and their help and I left. Would you believe a week later, I get a phone call from the polite secretary <laughs> saying that the manager would like to interview me. Wow. If I had a took the other secretary's uh, opinion or embraced her perception of the reality at that moment, I would have never gotten that interview. I would have never worked for that company. And I worked for that company for over a year while I was in high school. And it helped me to grow and mature. It helped me in my management and my supervisory skills. It helped me to be, you know, committed and diligent. It taught me responsibility. And that's what I needed at that point in my life. And you know, you have what you see yourself having. You can do what you see yourself doing in life. It's not about what others see you accomplishing. It's about what you see yourself accomplishing in life. Other people will always put you in their limited experience of life. Therefore, they will put what limits on what you can do in life, what you can have in life, what you can become in life. You know, when I look in my um, affirmation guide, my prayer book, my vision book, I flip through the pages and I have photos that go with my affirmations. Why? Because I'm getting an image of where I am going in life. It's not based on where I've been, but it's based on where I'm seeing, where I see myself, what? Going. Before I purchased the house I own now, you know, I had a vision of a house with several bedrooms, with several bathrooms. You know, I had a vision of a side load garage. I didn't want my garage facing the street. You know, it's personal preface. It's what do you want? I had a vision of what, a three car side load garage. And that's what I have today. I had a vision of a theater in my basement. I have that theater. I wanted my master bedroom on the first floor. Master, master. <laughs> I wanted my master suite or master bedroom on the first floor. I wanted my home office on the first floor right when you come in the uh, main entrance there. And you know, I have those things. Why? Because I saw them. That's right. 
I wanted a home that was 5,000 square feet. And I far exceeded that goal with this home. It's about just under 5,500 square feet, give or take a few. But I first what? Saw it. I first what? Envisioned it. No one did it for me but me. I saw it. And guess what? A builder caught the vision and built it. That's right. But first, I had to have the image of what I want before it could be what? Built. A lot of people say, oh, I want a house. They say, you ask them what kind. Any kind. I just need a house. No, what do you really want? You have what you want in life. How do you say it? You ask them one, what type of vehicle are you believing for? I don't know. Any kind. You know what's interesting? They don't make the any kind model. <laughs> And then they get a car they don't like, they don't enjoy, and they're still upset. They're still not satisfied. They're still not happy because they didn't have what? A vision. And when there's no vision, we settle. Let me say that again. When there is no vision, we settle. We settle for a way of life. We settle for circumstances. We settle for experiences that are what? Less than the best for us. Uh, I see so many people do this in the employment arena. They know they're talented. People, they know they're gifted. But when the HR person comes and slides them the offer letter across the table or send it an email, they'll look at that and they'll know that's not the figure they really want. They know they need several more thousand dollars. But because of a lack of confidence, and because of fear, they'll accept that offer. I remember uh, I was ex receiving one position. I had saw myself in this position. And I remember sitting in human resources. And, you know, they were thanking me for my contributions because I was a contractor before I interviewed to be a permanent employee. And I remember she was thanking me for my contributions. I did such a wonderful and marvelous job. And, you know, they couldn't wait to bring me on board as a full-time employee. And so she slid the offer paper across the table. I looked at the offer. I knew that was less than what I wanted. I was not ashamed. I was not, you know, timid. I wasn't fearful. And my question to her was, What's the max pay for this position? She says, excuse me? <laughs> she says, what is, I say to her, what is the max pay for this position? She says, give me a moment. So she turns to her desk, gets something, flip through something. She comes back, she gives me a number. So I flip the offer letter over and I write on the back. I will gladly accept X, Y, Z. For this position, sincerely, T.D. Brewer. And I slid it across the table to her. And she looked at it, and she looked at me like, uh, let me get back to you. She was just expecting me to say yes. But I wasn't saying yes to what she wanted me to have. I was saying yes to what I wanted. So often in life, we don't say yes to what we, what we really want. And it is so important that you and I believe in ourselves to the degree where we will not deny ourselves, but we will say yes to our vision, yes to our goals, yes to our dreams, yes to what it is we really want. And so a couple of days go by, I get a phone call. I go back to human resources, meet with the same wonderful lady that I had met with a few days earlier. And guess what? She came back to the table with a different amount of money. They increased the starting salary. In addition to the starting salary, there was a $4,000 sign on bonus, if you will. I didn't even ask for the bonus. The bonus was never a part of the original conversation. But because I asked for more money, guess what? I received it. See, you and I have to ask in life. Our way sure, Jesus told us that if we would ask anything, that's it. If we would what, ask. 
So often we never get out of life what we really desire because we never ask. Asking is so important. Never feel like you shouldn't ask because the question you don't ask, you will never get the answer to. And you will always wonder what would have happened if I had only asked. Amen. All right. Let's dive into day 14. I pray that those words of encouragement really minister to you and that as we continue here for the next few minutes, this teaching will continue to minister to you and enlighten you and expand your capacity to experience more of the God life, the blessed life. Amen. All right. If you have your book, The Art of Mastering the Blessed Life, I want to ask you to open with me to page 47, day 14. And the scripture for today is 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and has given to you and has been given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Let's look at this scripture a little bit more. Let's dissect it. Let's investigate it. Let's discover the message that the apostle Paul is trying to communicate to you and I. He says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He's challenging us to increase our understanding of the value of who we are. That's right. Even in his day, people devalued themselves. Just as we see today, people with a wrong self-image, a wrong self-psychology, or low self-esteem. Why? Because they don't recognize the value of who they really are. And Paul says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of what? The Holy Spirit. Don't you recognize your worth is so great that even God placed his spirit within you? God didn't just place his spirit anywhere. He placed it within you you who lives in you and was given to you how by God God sees and recognizes your value and your worth God recognizes your potential as you are what his greatest masterpiece you are God's configuration you are God's handiwork you are produced and manufactured by God Almighty. And when he created you, he looked at you and said, it's all good. That's right. And so he recognizes your goodness. He recognizes your greatness. He recognizes your worth. But he challenges us here to recognize it for ourselves. So we won't devalue who we really are. And we won't take for granted who lives on the inside of us. All right, the devotional piece. The exalted Christ lives within me. In me are infinite wisdom, knowledge, understanding, creative ideas, and concepts. The nature of Christ is my nature, as Christ and I are one. Nothing can separate me from the indwelling presence of Christ. I love Christ, and Christ loves me. Christ demonstrates his love in me daily. I have the mind of Christ, which is my guide to living the abundant life. All right, let's go back to the top here. The exalted Christ lives where? Within me. We know that the Bible says that Jesus has risen and he's seated with who? The Father. And guess what? The same nature, the same essence that's seated with the Father is seated within you and I. And it says, and, and it says here what? In me and you is what? Infinite wisdom. That's right. You are much smarter than anyone has ever given you credit for. You are much brighter than you ever given yourself credit for. In you is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, creative ideas, and concepts. The nature of Christ is my nature, as Christ and I are what? One. Nothing can separate me from what? The indwelling presence of Christ. 
There should not be anything that can come between you and the Christ that live within you. Because see, the Christ in you, the hope of glory, the presence of God within you, the creative essence of I am can do all things. Nothing is impossible with you. Because of the Christ in you, you are anointed to succeed in life. You are anointed to break through in life. You are anointed to break forth in life. You are anointed to go forth and be all that you can be. You are anointed to do all that you can envision yourself doing. Why? Because the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing breaks every barrier. The anointing tears down the limitations that you have what? Imposed upon yourself and what you have allowed others to put upon you. The anointing is a breaker. That's right. And because of Christ in you, you can break forth in life. When I was in elementary school and I had moved from Mississippi to Illinois, they placed me in special education at one point because I wasn't like everyone else. There was something different. You know, I stopped speaking because they would laugh at my accent. They mocked me. They made fun of me. So I didn't want to participate because I didn't want to participate and being the class joke, if you will, something was wrong with me. So they placed me in special ed. I was labeled. I rode the short bus. You know, we came in through a different entrance when I was transferred. You know, we didn't go to the cafeteria. We ate in the classroom out of styrofoam dishes when it was lunchtime. They wheeled our lunch in. They wheeled the remains of lunch away. <laughs> But, you know, I never allowed that experience to overshadow, that's right, overshadow my potential in life. I never allowed that experience to define who I am. That's right. Many people are shocked when I share that experience. They're like, you were in special ed? I said, yes, I was. No way. Yes, I was. And they're like, but you are a self-taught network engineer. Yes, I am. You learned so much IT on your own and you are a mentor? Yes, I was at the community college. I helped people transition uh, several years ago from manufacturing to IT. One of the local uh, car assembly plants had downsized. And so a lot of people came into this program where they were taught new skills. And I was one of the individuals that helped them adjust. And I didn't have a degree in what I was teaching them. But I was self-taught to the point where my skill set outweighed those with a degree. That's right. Because I believed in me and what I had to offer. You know, when you recognize who lives in you, you don't have a choice but to believe in you. That's right. Because as you believe in you, you believe in the spirit that lives in you. I love Christ and Christ loves me. Do you feel the love that surrounds you, that embraces you? Even when you're asleep, you're being held by love. When you're going forth throughout your day, you're being held by love because Christ is love within us. I have the mind of Christ, which is my guide to living what? The abundant life. You don't have to live a life based on situations and circumstances. It doesn't matter about your background or your past. You got the hope of glory living on the inside of you. And because you have access to the mind of Christ, you can live a wishes fulfilled life. You can be that uh, what your children need. You can be that hero that others look up to. You can be that mentor. You can be that aspiration. You can be the inspiration that others need. That's right. Because you go forward believing in you and God in you. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.